Hey YouTube family. Okay, so God really put this on my heart. I wanted to come in and share. Um, I just left day two of vacation Bible school at my church. And of course, I'm in the adult class. <laughs> Yay. But um, yeah, so the, the uh, lesson plan for, or the topic for this particular vacation Bible school is game on. Um, so there's like a sports theme to it and it's really cool. The church is all decorated and everything. Uh, and it is wonderful so far. And I know it will continue to be wonderful. So today's uh, lesson was Jesus helps me believe. And that uh, the scripture came from John 20th, 29 for the adults uh, but then the entirety was John 19 through the 31st so you can look that up on your own time feel free and a lot of what was being um, spoken about was our belief and um, being able to speak the words that God has given us uh, in faith whether it's you need a healing or um, you need deliverance in something, or you just, you need a job. Um, there are so many different things that we can believe on. And those are, those are kind of big things, but even the small things God cares about. And we spoke about, uh, Thomas and how he doubted. And he said that unless I see the holes in Jesus' hands and his feet and touch his side, um, then I won't believe that he's been resurrected. But even after that disbelief, there was still a place uh, with Jesus for Thomas uh, because Jesus, God, loves us and he cares for us no matter what sort of um, mistakes we make or how we are lacking, whether it's in our belief and in other ways, there's still a place for us. He still loves us and he wants to encourage us. So once again, Jesus helps me to believe but as we went on um, into uh, speaking about uh, belief and sharing belief, etc., several people spoke about their interactions with others and how help uh, how Jesus sort of uses them and helps them to communicate with others. And something that I noticed was a common thread of people, and that's something that I'm a big believer in that. When it comes to what God has us to do on this earth, a lot of it, I think probably at least 98% of gifts and talents, they're very few. Okay, let's go with zero. I don't know of any gifts and talents that have been giving us, I'm keeping an eye on the time, that have been given to us that are for just us. Most of the times, the gifts and talents that you have, it barely serves you. But the great things that it does for other people is what's important. And something came to me as I was sitting there, or rather not something came to me, but Jesus laid something on my heart. And not only does Jesus help us believe in him and things and whatever, but two things. Jesus helps us believe in people and Jesus helps us believe in ourselves. If the calling that God has on us pertains to people, which like I said, like all of them do, all the gifts, the talents, the things that we have, they're for the good of other people and helping other people and seeing other people come from point A to point B, whether it's sharing testimonies, etc. all of it works together for that common good. And he helps us to believe in ourselves. Now, here's where we start out at, okay. So Jesus helps us believe in people. It's really hard to uh, talk to people or to help people if you don't even believe in them. You see somebody, you know, walking in the store, walking down the street, and suddenly you've created a distance between that person and yourself because, oh, they look different. Or, oh, they look this way, they look that way. Um, when they talk, they sound like this and it's off-putting to me, you know, whatever. Um, but something that God will give you is the ability to believe in people. Believe in, 
if it's just something small, if you, not if, but when, you can find that one thing, because everybody has something. I don't care how horrible of a person somebody may be, how whatever they look or whatever they sound, there's something that you can find that's good about that person that will help you connect with them to be able to share something out of yourself with that person. So never let an opportunity pass you by to be able to share your light and in doing so share the light of God with somebody else. You don't have to go around beating nobody over the head with the Bible and all this other stuff. It's about you and sharing what is on the inside of you. And then Jesus helps us to believe in ourselves. You're not going to go out and talk to anybody if you don't believe in yourself. By nature, I am an introvert. Most of my days are kind of spent by myself and I'm just fine with it. I like it. Um, I, I'm not one of those people, I have, don't have to be around folks all the time and whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's really easy for me to shy away and to stay uh, by myself. But something that God has been doing over the last uh, three, four, five years, whatever, it's been slowly building me um, up to come out of that shell because, like I said, the gifts that we have, they're not for ourselves, but they're for other people. But if we never embrace it, and if we never step out of our comfort zone, then how will we ever do any of the things, excuse me, that God has for us to do? Talking to people, being able to find one thing good about somebody. I am a licensed cosmetologist, and one of the things that you learn when you're in the beauty industry or whatever is that you got to be able to find good things about people because I mean you can't tell people oh you look tore up that's why you should come to me nobody wants to hear that <laughs> nobody wants to hear that nobody wants to uh see that you look down on them or nobody wants to nobody wants to be a part of that that doesn't make people feel good at all if you can find things those commonalities that can help you you know, connect with somebody else and then share with them, then life is beautiful. And that is a beautiful thing to be able to do. If you're in the store, I don't care if somebody is serving you or you see somebody they look down or you see somebody they look beautiful. Those are all things that you could approach people with. Somebody looks down, oh my gosh, your, um, your nails look beautiful. Just that little compliment can liven them up. Or, oh my goodness, um, your eyelashes, you know, they're amazing. Maybe they have false lashes. Maybe they have great, you know, lashes. And that could be the absolute only moderately decent thing that you see about them. And none of that matters. You can focus in on that one thing and compliment it and it'll bring them out. Oh, sir, that outfit, you know, looks very nicely put together. I love that. That tie, the color on you looks fantastic. You know, oh, ma'am, your eyes are gorgeous. I, I wish I had full, beautiful eyes like that. Things that you can connect with people about. It also helps to, like I said, bring you out of yourself. And once you get out of yourself, the more of an impact you can have with those around you. So then towards the end of the lesson, um, something... A question that was asked was, why do you think it's hard for people to believe? And of course, we had some people that were like, you know, oh, you know, it's it's never hard for me to believe. You know, ooh, that is good. That is, that is beautiful. That is a beautiful thing. I myself can say that, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's hard for me to not believe because I know God is great. But the Lord just laid something on my heart once that question was asked. And this was the simple answer that he gave to me. The reason that it's hard for people to believe is that they don't think or know that they are worth what they're believing for. And I was like, oh my goodness. And it's so true. It's so true. If you don't know you're worthy of something or you don't think you're worthy of something, you're not you're not going to reach for it. You're not going to ask for it. You're not going to, you know, think that you can have it. Um, let me use an example from my own life. So there are certain things that 
you know, I used to just want in life um, things that I sort of uh, hope for or whatever. But I didn't really exercise the faith in those areas of really truly believing that I would one day walk in that or do that or have that or anything in those areas. And after God gave this uh, revelation to me, it sort of clicked. It came back to me and brought me home. When I was younger, and guys, you have to you have to realize that we're all like this. Excuse the lighting, guys. The bulb just went out. But we have different things that have affected us from a child up until now. Different things that have happened, and we've had to sort of dig deep um, to root those things out of ourselves because it impacted us in a negative way. Me growing up, living with my grandmother and my aunt, that was something, you know, that most people around me, matter of fact, I can't think of anybody that I knew that had that experience. And it's not like my parents weren't out there somewhere. I just wasn't with them. So, you know, to a certain degree, I felt completely unloved and abandoned and I have feelings of worthlessness and all these other things. So all the visions of great things that were out there, it was very hard now thinking about it. it I didn't necessarily strive for them because I didn't believe that some unloved, unworthy person could have these things or could do these things because who would care, right? Uh, but the more that you get to know God, the more he fills you with a sense of knowing who you are and whose you are. And once you realize who you are and whose you are, which is you are a child of the risen king, then you begin to, to put two and two together. You know what? I am. I'm a child of the risen king. And if he said, I can have this and I can have this, or if he gave me a vision to do something, I can pursue it because I can have it because he said so, right? So y'all, my voice gets a little high when I get excited sometimes. So what not? Mm. Pay that no mind. Now, I've got just a few scriptures here. I don't want the video to be too long. We're already over 12 minutes. I don't want the video to be too long. Let me share these scriptures and expound just a little bit on these scriptures. Like I said, once you realize after spending time with God, the more you spend time with them and the more you read his word, this is why we have his word, because there's a lot of valuable stuff in there that he wants to share with us to let us know exactly how important we are to him. In him and through him, there's so much that we can do. Let's start with Isaiah 55 and 11. And this is where it all begins, guys, because you can trust the word of God. You can trust it. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return until me empty, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I have sent it. God's word will not return unto him void. So if there's something in the word, you can grasp onto that and know for sure, for sure. It's not a lie. God ain't playing no games with you. It ain't no ha ha, hide and go seek. I'll be here. Whoops, not over there. He ain't playing no games with you. So if he says that you can have something, if he says, ask me and it will be done in my name, you can, you can. There is nowhere in there that it says you are not worthy. And you know why? John 1 and 12. But to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave them. He gave them. The name of the child of God. So you are a child of God. Why? Because you have believed in him. And you've made the choice to receive him and to walk with him. And if you're not to that level yet, guess what? The moment that you make that decision and you're translated over into the kingdom of Christ, guess what? You are his child. 
Sure, he loves you, whether you're walking with him or not. But even the more, when you walk in him and you believe in him, he's got so much for you in the palm of his hand. And all you have to do is reach out and say, Father, may I, can I, please, I need, I'm in need of, will you do this for me? And his answer is yes. Of course, it's in his, in his will. If you're asking for somebody else's husband, you're not going to get it. I'm going to let you know that right now. So, Jeremiah 29, 11 said, For I know the plans that I have for you. Okay? I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not evil. To give you a future and a hope. Well, once again, it already said that the word that comes out of my mouth shall not return unto me void. All right. So here he's saying that he already has plans for you to give you a hope in the future. So if you're in a dismal situation, you're feeling lost. You're feeling like you don't belong. You're feeling like you can't have the things that you need. You can't have the things that you desire. You can't accomplish that what's on your mind. Guess what? It's a lie. Okay. It's a lie. It's a lie, it's not true, send it back to the enemy. Let it go. Because he said here that he knows the plans he has for you. Plans for good, not for evil. To give you a hope and a future. And guess what? He had this plan from the foundation of the earth. From the foundation of the earth. Before you were even born, he knew you. He knew about you. Look it up in the Bible. It's in the Word. That's why I say the more that you read the Word, the more that you... Uh, begin to to hone in and and see what the word is saying you start to learn more about God who he is and how he loves you and the plans that he has for you he has great things in store for you so we've got to walk in that okay so let so let, let me read that one more time Jeremiah 29 and 11 for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans for a welfare and not for evil to give you a hope and a future so back to not feeling worthy enough to believe that God will give you everything that you need he'll give you the pure desires of your heart all that all right so another example from childhood. So like I said, uh, as a child, I grew up with my grandmother, with my aunt, and um, my mom and her side of the family were in Virginia, uh, West Virginia. My dad was in Atlanta, and there was a great sense of abandonment that I had. There was a sense of loneliness that I had. There was a, fa uh, a sense of being an outcast, like I was not wanted and I did not belong. And all these feelings that were given to me, and they weren't of God, obviously, because God only has good things for us. So that mindset that's created there that I'm not worthy of this, I'm not worthy of that, I'm not worth this, I'm not worth that. When something happens and it's bad and you you're just... You let these things cloud your mind. You're like, that. That's that's all I'm worth. This is this is it. And God has so much more for us. So here is the lie, and here is what we have to dispel out of our systems. And that's why we have to read the Word and begin to know who God says that we are, because we are great and we are mighty and we are daughters and sons of the Most High God. You know what that makes us? God is a king. And he owns everything, then guess what? That means that we're able to inherit everything. That everything that's his is ours. Okay? So with the feelings that I had, the lie... Okay, my camera shut off. So the fears that I had, those were all lies, okay? False evidence appearing real. That's what they say that fear stands for. Uh, false evidence appearing real. So... The false evidence was that I was not worth this or that. The false evidence was that I was not loved. The false evidence was I was not good enough. The false evidence was this is my story. That, you know, this is it. This is who I am. I'm unworthy. Period. 
false evidence appearing real. All that stemmed from not having my parents and or not being able to live with them, etc. However, though that false evidence lingered and it appeared real for a long time, kept me from seeing certain things. It kept me from uh, going after certain things. It kept me from having a level of confidence that I should have had. It kept me from seeing myself as the, the person that God really had. This, this was false evidence. But to me, it was very real. But here is the thing. N not to say anything wrong about uh, my mom's side of the family or my dad. Um, I, I grew up with his uh, mother and sister. Not to say anything bad about them. Siblings, if you're watching this, no, no shade, no shade. Not to say anything bad about any of these people. However, this... Look at it, guys. This is an amazing thing in and of itself. We overcome by our testimony. So let this be a testimony right here. I felt all those things. But guess what? From the very foundation of the earth. Oh, my God. From the very foundation of the earth, the Lord looked down through space and time, and he saw me. Okay? He saw me, and he knew that he had certain plans for me. He knew that he loved me with an everlasting love, okay? And even when I didn't see it, it was there. So I felt so many things and felt so bad because I felt like I was unloved and I was an outcast from my family that I just didn't fit in anywhere or whatever. But here's the truth, because that was the false evidence that appeared real to me. But here's the truth. If... I would have, let's say, grown up with my mom, not, like I said, no shame, not to say anything wrong about the side of the family, but they, they, they different. It's a different, they're a different breed over there. You know, they're very, uh, they're in, you know, they're into the streets, street life, you know, they'd be out there, thug life, whatever, I don't know. It's, it's different. It's real different. It's real different. It's, it's, it's. It's different. That's all. I'm just going to leave that right there. It's different. That is not an atmosphere where I would be given the word of God. That I would be able to come up hearing about him. This camera does not want me to record, y'all. It doesn't want me to record. But I'm going to get there. All these videos about to come together. So the, so the Lord, you know, saw that being with my mother was not going to create who he wanted me to be or who he had predestined me to be. Okay, then we look at my father. Nothing against not, not, nothing against him, but um, he's, he's different too. <laughs> he's real different. Uh, bless the Lord <laughs> for them all. But my dad, he, he, he's, he be in the streets too. I just... <laughs> Guys, I'm not joking. Daddy likes to hang out in the hood. Nothing to get Daddy, if you watch this, I love you. But, um, yeah. That's a different lifestyle. Two, these are two different lifestyles. None of which would have led me to God. None of which would have led me to um, reaching my potential in Christ. And if it did, it would be a long ways coming. Because the, the roots would not be there. The seeds that have been planted since I was a child. Yeah, it wasn't perfect. It was not great growing up because I felt so alone and, you know, I grew up in a very strict household that there wasn't a lot, you know, a lot of lovey-dovey conversation. All the things that I feel like I needed wasn't necessarily there. But guess what? It show beat the alternative. It beat it out real good. So, when the Lord gave me that revelation, it was like, oh, I, my eyes were open. And he gave me that revelation uh, fairly early on. And something that always resonates with me is the story of Esther. And one line in particular. For who knows if I have brought you here for such a time as this. So everything that I saw as so bad growing up that made me feel like I was unworthy, I looked at it one way. The devil tried to twist it up to make me be somebody that I'm not supposed to be. But all along, for my good, God already had it set up. 
He already had it set up to put me in a specific place at a specific time to receive specific things that I needed to have from him. So let's move on. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Believe in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Okay? Everything that you can believe and trust him for, you're worth it. He already said you are. From the very foundation of the earth, he planned it out. He said that he loved you with an everlasting love. He said that you are his child. Go back and read it. He said he knows the plans that he has for you. And he's not going to let his word return unto him void. Get to know yourself through the eyes of God by getting in the scriptures. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Y'all, I'm going to try to beat this clock. If you are called, which you are, once you are translated into, into the kingdom of light, out of darkness, out of being worldly, into being what God called you to be, guess what? You are his. And because you are his, it says, we know that all things work together for good and for his purpose. Okay, like I said, I'm going to try to beat this clock. Let that be your story tonight. From here on, if you didn't know it, now you know. You are called. You are worthy. Just walk in it. Receive it. Walk in it. Get in the word and learn about him. I'm going to beat this clock. So I'm And one more thing. No, 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 that you are important. Everything that you have been through up until this point has led you where you're supposed to be going. The times that you fell and you did stuff that you weren't supposed to do, God already knows about it. He already knows about it. Okay, don't lie to yourself. He already knows. Talk about it with God. Nothing that you've done. I don't care what it is. Nothing that you done have done disqualifies you from the purpose that God has for you. Just begin to find out who you are in Christ, through Christ, by reading the word that he has already set aside for you. Everything that you need to know about him is in the word. And everything that you need to know about who you are is in the word as well. Let me encourage you to get in the word. Talk to God. Talk to God. He knows exactly who you are. He knows where you're going. He knows what you're going to be. And you can be and do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Be encouraged on tonight, guys. I hope this encouraged you as much as it encouraged me as I minister to you. I minister to myself. I encourage myself. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to watch this video. Please like, subscribe, and share it with somebody that needs to know who they are in Christ. Have a great night. Bye.